so today we'll see the tutorial for the stability week so again the outline of this uh, tutorial is arranged in such a way so that whatever the theoretical results we have discussed during the whole week we will see the direct application of those uh, detailed results uh, in addition we have also written the slide number as well so that you can refer to the theoretical results while applying those results to solve some problems so we will start with the solvability of Lyapunov equations uh, Bebo and internal stability uh, questions related to the Lyapunov theory for linear systems we will also see the margin of stability which we have not discussed in detail during the uh, lecture then we will see the stability of linear time variant systems followed by the sampling and stability this topic was also not covered explicitly during the lecture week and finally the stability or some or knowing some relationship between the stability and the Jordan canonical forms so the problem first deals with the solvability of the Lyapunov matrix, matrix equation so while one of the key results in the stability we had seen that Lyapunov equation played a key role and it hinges on to compute the matrix P given the matrix Q so here we will see that how you can compute that matrix uh, during the lecture slide we had seen one formula which requires the computing one integral so if we do not want to compute the integral and we just want to com comment on the solvability of the of the equation or computing some P matrix for a given Q so this problem deals with that issue so here we consider the linear system which is a homogeneous with the state matrix A 0 1 minus 1 0 so here we uh, need to comment on the solvability of the Lyapunov matrix equation which is given by this one now note that here that here in the stability result concerning with the Lyapunov equation Q was chosen as a positive definite matrix now here we have chosen Q as a semi-definite so we'll see in the solution that uh, what is the significance of selecting the Q as a, a semi-definite matrix so here recall the lecture slide number 22 where for a square matrix of dimension n we and having the eigenvalues lambda 1 to lambda n uh, eigenvalues of A then the equation has a unique solution of P corresponding to each Q now note that here Q is again selected as a positive definite so in the slides we discussed or we focused mainly on the positive definite matrices so corresponding to each Q if and only if the eigenvalue of the matrix A is not equal to 0 in addition the summation of the two distinct eigenvalues or in fact two similar eigenvalues should not be equal to 0 for all i comma j so if you compute the eigenvalues of the matrix A directly you would see that uh, it is on the imaginary axis plus minus j so therefore the required condition is violated so we can say that the Lyapunov equation which was given by this does not possess a unique solution for a given Q now we wanted to comment on to the solvability only for a semi-definite matrix but we had seen that if Q had been chosen as a positive definite matrix and if the eigenvalues are lying on the imaginary axis then it does not possess a unique solution now let's consider a case where Q is a <coughs> semi-definite so we directly select Q as a zero matrix and if we start solving the left hand side of this Lyapunov equation we would have A transpose P plus P into A so all the matrices uh, A matrix and its transpose are written in or are substituted in the, into this equation and for computing the P matrix we have used uh, uh, symbolic variables P11, P12 and this P12 as well because it is a uh, symmetric matrix and P22 so substituting these values we obtain that we can compute the solution for P's 
which are given by p12 is equal to 0 and p11 is equal to p22 <coughs> meaning to say there exists a solution for a semi definite matrix <coughs> now suppose uh, therefore for any a belonging to a set of real numbers the matrix p is equal to ai is the solution of the lyapunov matrix equation so the consequence of choosing q as a semi definite matrix we see though it does not possess a unique solution because for different a's we will obtain different p but being a semi definite matrix we can ensure that there it exists at least one solution okay <coughs> now choosing q as a <coughs> uh, strictly positive definite matrix uh, you would see once you start solving for all the p i j's uh, you would see that we obtain p11 is equal to p22 and p12 is equal to 1 and p12 is equal to minus 1 which is not possible so for q is equal to 2y should be 2y hmm, the Lyapunov equation has no solution at all right? <coughs> uh, the problem 2 deals with that given a uh, continuous time linear time invariant system where the A matrix is a square matrix of dimension 3 similarly the B matrix is 3 cross 1 and the C matrix is 1 cross 3 so again it is a single input single output system with initial conditions given as this so, <coughs> so note that here that x3 is given in terms of the initial condition of the second state so we want to analyze the system uh, separately for the internal stability and also for the BBO stability. If we write explicitly the dynamics of that uh, state space equation, we can write three different equations, one and each for the different states x1 dot, x2 dot, and x3 dot. So if you see the first equation, first uh, the state of or the right hand side does not contain any x2 and x3 so we can separately solve this equation for x1 which has been done here by using the variation of constants formula then putting those x1 or using those x1 we can compute this x2 and x3 separately for the given initial conditions now write computing yt which is nothing but the summation of the first two state minus the third state we obtain final this result so you would see that we can show that given a bounded input signal u being a bounded signal we would obtain a bounded output for all time t hmm? so this system is clearly a bbo stable system now checking for the internal stability which requires to compute the eigenvalues you would notice the eigenvalues of the a matrix are computed as minus 1 and minus 1 and 3 okay? so it is clearly visible that because of one of the eigenvalues being on the right hand side the state space system is not at all stable in the sense of Lyapunov as one of the definitions we had introduced during the lecture week now one important um, conclusion we also made uh, during the lecture week while discussing the relationship between the Bebo stability and the Lyapunov stability whether the both ways implication <coughs> holds that if my system is Bebo stable does it imply that it would be internal stable or if my system is internal stable my system would automatically be Bebo stable <coughs> now with this example we have seen that the state space equation is Bebo stable but it is not internal stable so this implication would hold true while this implication won't hold so which is a false uh, <coughs> so here we have written this external stability by external stability we actually mean the Bebo stability because we also call this external stability because we are dealing it uh, we are dealing with the external signals uh, u and y not with the internal signals which is the state so that's where the we call it the internal stability okay the problem 3 deals with that assume that the origin of the system which is a homogeneous system given the state matrix a 
is asymptotically stable. So we know that all the eigenvalues of this matrix lie on the left hand side. Then we need to show that the matrix A is similar to another matrix A bar which satisfies that A bar plus A bar transpose is a negative definite. Okay. So this question can also be formulated in another words that is to say that the system is equivalent by a linear change of coordinates to a system uh, in terms of the state uh, denoted by Z with the A bar state matrix for which the Euclidean norm is strictly decreasing along non-zero solutions. So if you recall that the Euclidean norm it is equivalent to computing the two norm of the matrix or the vector. Okay, So let's see the solution to this problem. So here you should recall the slide number 30 which discusses the Lyapunov theory of stability for linear systems. So recall that since the matrix is A it's Hurwitz, saying the matrix A being Hurwitz meaning that all the eigenvalues are on the left hand side. So there exists a positive definite solution to this equation given a positive definite matrix Q. Now this Q can be selected any positive definite matrix so we have selected that I so there exists any P which is again symmetric and positive definite satisfy this equation. Okay, Since the matrix is already uh, a stable matrix so the Lyapunov equation would hold for the given Q and P. Now <coughs> Once we have computed the P matrix, we can define another positive definite matrix, let's say S, such that S square is equal to P. Now we can also write S is equal to the under root of P and we, we shall call it the positive square root of the matrix P. Why the positive square root? Because we know that if whenever we are taking the square root of any a positive number, so the square root could be either on the positive side or on the negative side. But we are specifically taking the positive square root and we call it uh, this matrix as a positive square root matrix of the computed matrix P. <coughs> now using the property of the symmetric and a positive definite matrix, we say that this matrix uh, P to the power 1 by 2 is invertible and we can write this matrix as P to the power minus 1 by 2 as the inverse of the square matrix itself. Okay. So multiplying 1 on the right hand side and on the left by p to the power minus 1 by 2 and rearranging it we obtain this equation. <coughs> so see if uh, we can see this step in more detail. So starting from this equation if we I multiply p to the power minus 1 by 2 and here I would have A transpose and P into P to the power minus 1 by 2. Right? This is the first term. The second term is P to the power minus 1 by 2. P A again P to the power minus 1 by 2 plus the multiplication of P to the power minus 1 by 2 by itself would yield p to the power minus 1 is equal to 0. <coughs> okay, Now we combine these two terms which yields p to the power 1 by 2 which is this term. A to the trans a transpose would stay as it is. Uh, this matrix as well. Now on the second term we would have the p to the power 1 by 2 a matrix and this matrix would stay as it is. Now we take this p inverse onto the right hand side writing minus p inverse. Okay. So we note here that since p is a positive definite matrix its inverse would also be positive definite. So the right hand side would definitely be a negative definite matrix because of the uh, negative sign. Now with a bar defining as uh, this complete part <coughs> we see that A is similar to A bar and A bar plus A transpose is less than 0. In fact you can see that the A bar is nothing but uh, similarly algebraically equivalent to this matrix A. 
which is related by uh, non singular transformation matrix p to the power 1 by 2 okay so this completes the proof of this part in the problem 4 we see that given a positive number sigma and q be a positive definite matrix and a a matrix of the same size as q show that if there exists a positive definite matrix p such that it satisfies this equation then every eigenvalue of a satisfies that the real part of the eigenvalue is less than minus sigma so you would notice here that if this part is not there then this equation is nothing but uh, Lyapunov equation Na? now and we know that for a given positive definite matrix Q if there exists a positive definite matrix P then the A matrix would be a stable matrix that is to say that all the eigenvalues would be on the left hand side if this part is not there okay now with the addition of this part what we need to show now or what it implies that the eigenvalues of the a matrix are also shifted towards the left hand side okay or let's say the in fact the the axis the zero axis is shifted to the uh, left hand side so the results which we discussed in the lecture slide 30 by using those results we would going to show that the axis has been also shifted towards the left hand side by adding this term into the uh, Lyapunov equation. So here we would going to use the uh, the quadratic forms and the metric norms which we have introduced during the lecture week. So let lambda be a possibly complex eigenvalue of the matrix A and V be the corresponding eigenvector. Right? So we know already that for uh, associated to the eigenvalue A, the eigenvector we can represent as AB is equal to lambda times V, where V is the eigenvector associated with the lambda. Now using the equation, we write the quadratic form, which is V star. V star is the complex conjugate of the vector V and this complete matrix which is on the left hand side in 2v now we know that this equation already holds so i can write on the right hand side also minus v star qv now using one of the so if i write this part only we would have v star a transpose p now another way of writing this part or or in fact i forgot this one so we would have this part also if I open this uh, bracket so specifically this part I can write as the complex conjugate transpose of the metric of the vector a into v hmm? you can see this equalization tra uh, transiting from this part to this part the rest of the part would remain same plus uh, v star p a into v plus uh, I can because sigma is a scalar so I can commute with the vector so I write 2 sigma v star p into v which is equal to the right hand side as it is now using this equation since it is a complex conjugate transpose it would become the complex conjugate of the of the lambda as well <coughs> lambda bar uh, v star p v similarly a v could also be replaced by this lambda v again lambda is a scalar so I can commute so we would have v star pv and similarly on to the third term now if I take the common part which is v star pv on to the right hand side and group all these scalar values <coughs> which is lambda bar plus lambda plus 2 sigma right? so what do we need for this matrix to be stable that the right hand side of the above should also be negative definite now this would be become negative definite if this scalar is less than 0 is on the left hand side now if I combine this lambda bar plus lambda it becomes twice the real part of lambda because lambda bar is a complex conjugate transpose of 
in fact the complex conjugate of the lambda only so i would have that lambda should be less than uh, minus sigma and since lambda was an arbitrary eigen value of a so this is uh, o then every eigen value lambda of a must satisfy that lambda should be less than minus sigma okay so this completes the proof of this part so one important conclusion you should uh, note here that if we add this term into the lyapunov equation <coughs> the key implication is that all the eigen values of a would also be shifted to or would also be shifted towards to the left hand side of that uh, scalar parameter introduced in the lyapunov equation okay so the problem 5 five deals with the stability of linear time varying systems <coughs> so consider the system the homogeneous system once again where a of t is given by this matrix which is a time dependent matrix so we want to analyze the system for stability so this equation is uh, this question is based on the lecture slide 57 where if i put some of the one of the statements from that slide that the fact that it is not possible to comment on the stability of a linear time varying system by merely computing the eigen values of the state matrix so so far if my system is an lti system we have been determining the stability by computing the eigen values hmm? now if we want to apply the same concept to a time varying matrix we had established that using the eigen value concept you cannot determine the stability of a time varying system though it is linear so we will see that how you can compute the de determine the stability <coughs> so for each t this uh, you can do very a very quick test that using this a of t matrix first of all compute the eigen values so you would notice that the matrix has a repeated eigen value on minus 1 now according to that concept we see that the matrix or the homogeneous system is a stable system but if we pay attention towards its computing the solution so we see that uh, x2 can be computed explicitly and by putting x2 into the first equation we can compute x1 so x2 trajectory is a stable trajectory for every initial condition right but if we pay close attention to x1t because of this part since it involves the positive powers of the exponential we see that the x1 trajectory will reach towards infinity as t tends to infinity meaning to say that this system is not stable because if this system is happen to be stable both the state trajectory should reach to zero as t tends to infinity while performing the eigen value test on this homogeneous system uh, signifies that this homogeneous system is a stable system so eigen value test is is not applicable for time varying systems and we need to or one way is to compute the solution <coughs> so this problem is an interesting problem where we would utilize some concepts which we the discretization concept we have introduced in the week 1 that we want to compare or first of all we want to determine the stability of the lti system given this a matrix and we want to compare the stability once the system is discretized now we had separate test for determining the stability given a continuous time system and a discrete time system now the problem here is that we are provided with a continuous time system now if we discretized it using the methods we have introduced in the week 1 we want to verify that the discrete time system is also stable or whether the stability depends on the sampling time right so here first of all we will so there were two methods we have uh, introduced for the discretization first is the eulerus method and the where we have approximated uh, this derivative part by that method 
another method is when we consider the signal u as a piecewise constant signal between the two sampling instant and then we computed another discretization form of the uh, continuous time system so here first of all we'll do the sampling using the Euler method at two different time uh, sampling time 0 0.5 and 0 0.1 and we see whether the system is state stable or unstable given the stability or unstability in the continuous time uh, domain so it, uh, you can quickly verify that the eigenvalues of the continuous time A matrix lie on the uh, left hand side and on the real axis so it is clearly an internal stable system right now if we sample it using the Euler's method uh, at the sample time t is equal to 0 0.5 this would be the A matrix in that case sample time multiplied by the A matrix plus an identity matrix of the appropriate dimension so we obtain this AD after putting this t is equal to 0 0.5 the continuous time A matrix and the identity we obtain this A of D ok now computing the eigenvalues of this A D matrix we see that one of the eigenvalues is inside the unit circle while another eigenvalue is outside the unit circle so if I sample my continuous time system at 0 0.5 we notice that the system is no longer a stable system in the discrete time domain now verifying at t is equal to 0 0.1 <coughs> uh, we see this AD matrix and computing the eigenvalues we notice that both the eigenvalues are in fact inside the unit circle so at one sample time t is equal to 0 0.1 it is a stable matrix or it is a still a stable system for another sample time which is a, a bit on the higher side <coughs> we see that the system is no longer a, a stable system and you can also parameterize the stability in terms of the sample time by solving this uh, last equation in terms of t and determining the condition on the t so we see that for all positive sampling time less than 0 0.53 the discrete time counterpart of the continuous time uh, system would always be stable right? this is what we have noticed that once we have chosen capital T is equal to 0 0.5 which is greater than this value then the system becomes an unstable system right? so now if we use another method of discretization that is the second method which is equivalent to computing the discretized uh, system by using the C2D command in the MATLAB which is the continuous to discrete uh, time domain discretization so you would notice that that state matrix whatever the state matrix we would obtain it would be stable for all the sample time hmm? so this method so one of the consequences or one of the motivation behind using another method of discretization is that the Euler method is uh, the least accurate result uh, pro provides the least accurate discretization discretized system and this is also visible in determining the stability also so this uh, condition provides a very conservative estimate of the sampling time now for the more accurate discretized method which is equivalent to the C2D command we say that the or you would notice that the state matrix is always a stable matrix okay <clears throat> so this is the last problem of this uh, tutorial so we want to comment on the stability of the system x dot is equal to ax where a is given by this 5 cross 5 matrix so here we would uh, utilize the theoretical results we had discussed onto the slide number 53 and 54 which basically discuss the relationship between the stability the Jordan forms and the minimal polynomial so if you recall that uh, we had defined the or we have obtained one of the results of st for stability that if the eigenvalues are on the left hand side and if some of the eigenvalues are on the imaginary axis or the origin 
and corresponding to those eigen values which have the zero real part if the zonin blocks are of one cross one then the system is marginally stable so first of all we will compute the eigen values uh, of this matrix then convert them into uh, another canonical form which is called the jordan forms and we'll see that whether if there are some eigen values on the having the zero real part if all the jordan blocks are of one cross one then the system is stable if it is not then the system won't be a marginally stable equivalently we have also defined in terms of computing the minimal polynomial which is basically computing the roots of a polynomial of a degree lesser than the characteristic polynomial if possible and there are some properties which needs to be satisfied for a minimal for the polynomial being the minimal polynomial so first of all we will compute the eigen values the eigen values of this a matrix uh, we have the repeated in eigen values at the origin and the another eigen values on minus 1 okay so for computing the jordan form you can use this matlab command uh, which is uh, given by its own name jordan and by the given matrix a so this j matrix you would obtain now if you notice here we have four repeated eigen values at the origin and one eigen value at minus 1 so start from so first of all we'll start from the uh, we'll form the jordan blocks so the first block is this one which is corresponding to three repeated eigen values at zero another jordan block is with respect to minus 1 and the last jordan block is with respect to the fourth eigen value at zero so here we notice that at the repeated eigen values at the origin we have a jordan block of 3 cross 3 so this system is not a marginally stable system okay now computing the uh, minimal polynomial first we write the characteristic polynomial s to the power 4 s plus 1 is equal to 0 so from here you would see directly we would obtain the repeated eigen values at located at 0 and another eigen value at minus 1 now with the procedures introduced into the lecture slides we compute the eigen values uh, uh, sorry the minimal polynomial and the minimal and the polynomial which is minimal and satisfy all the properties we had introduced at that time is given by s cube into s plus 1 the degree of this polynomial is 4 while the degree of the characteristic polynomial was uh, 5 so this is of a lesser degree and this minimal polynomial again shows that we have three repeated eigen values at 0 which is equivalent to saying here into the jordan blocks since the jordan block is of 3 cross 3 so it is trivial or it is expected uh from the minimal polynomial that it would yield the not so simple eigen values located at the origin okay